Grossmore National Park is a place for all people. With 20 trails to choose from, hikers of all skill levels will find a place they can explore and enjoy. Eight of these 20 trails are rated as moderate, and those are the trails we're going to focus on today. According to Parks Canada, a moderate rated trail is gently rolling with short steep sections with elevation gains of 1 to 500 meters or 325 to 1,640 feet. We're going to count down the trails beginning with the shortest and working our way to the longest. If any of these trails stand out to you, we encourage you to watch our full length trail videos giving you an in-depth look at each hike. Starting out at number 8 is Berry Hill. At 1.5 kilometers or 1 mile long, this is the shortest moderate rated trail. Set aside an hour or so to make your way up the hill. You'll follow a series of well maintained paths as well as stairs to get to the top. The trail loops around at the very top giving you various opportunities to get some amazing shots. Setting up camp at number 7 is Stanleyville. You don't need to hit the trail to get amazing views here. Right from the parking lot, you will have views of towering mountains and the east arm. A bit of trail maintenance is happening, so don't be afraid to help out. Take a bucket or two with you on the trail and help dump the small stones on muddy or uneven sections of the trail. You'll be climbing up and over this mountain, so don't let the 4 km or 2.5 mile distance make you think it will be easy. You'll see several steep sections on this two hour hike, including a series of stairs to help you up and over. On the other side of the mountain, you'll be rewarded with your own private beach and some great views of the mountains of Gros Morne in the distance. Relax in one of the Park Canada's red chairs or set up along the water and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Our number six spot belongs to the Lookout Trail. Located at the rear parking lot of the Discovery Center, this trail runs the risk of limited parking spaces. This five kilometer or 3.1 mile hike will test you from the very start. There are no brakes given and you climb steadily. This trail is technically given a moderate to difficult rating. During our visit, park staff were in the middle of creating a new, wider trail up the mountain. Plan on spending about three hours in total, but don't worry, the second half of this hike is pleasantly flat and you'll be following some boardwalks. From the top, you'll get stunning views of the mountain ranges. Here you can see Bond Bay and the Tablelands, a famous trail talked about in both our Easy Rated Trails video as well as the Complete Hiking Guide video of this location. Setting up at number 5 is Loman River Trail. You don't see much on the majority of the 6 km or 3.7 mile hike, but once you make your way down to the river, you'll be glad you made it. Wide and proud, the Loman River flows along the base of the mountains. The river is part of the east arm and is close to the Stanleyville hike we talked about before. Giving yourself two hours should be good as there aren't many steep sections compared to the other trails so far in this video. At the end of the trail you'll come to an open camping field. We followed the signs to the parking lot and walked the road the rest of the way to our car. Holding the number four position is Green Gardens. This trail starts out uninspiring, but once you pop over the mountain, the views open up. This trail shares a moderate and difficult trail rating, depending on whether you take the full loop or turn back at the overlook sections. I've done both, and in my personal opinion, I don't feel there's any additional benefits from completing the entire loop. All the views are located at the overlook, the red chairs are located here, and you have completed a great hike from this point. That said, push a little bit further in the trail past the red chairs through the next section of trees. The trail opens up to some stunning coastal views. It's here that I recommend you turn around. If you want to continue the entire trail and not just the 9 km or 5.6 miles you've already done, prepare for a lot of up and down. A series of rough stairs takes you up and down the mountainside. You'll need to cross the river twice at the bottom. There are backwoods camping sites that would be a beautiful stay if you wanted to break up your time along this trail. No matter which route you take, be sure to give yourself at least 3-4 to four hours to hike and enjoy the views. Number 3 belongs to Stuckless Pond. Unfortunately, during our trip, this trail was closed due to flooding and an important bridge being washed out. According to Parks Canada, this is a 9.5km trail and should take about 3 hours to complete. Coming in at number 2 is Baker Brook Falls. 
After hiking this trail, I was very surprised it made it to the moderate list. Almost completely flat, I figured the 10 km or 6.2 mile length may be the biggest factor. Before you get to the falls, be sure to make a detour and walk through the moose exclosure. This will give you the opportunity to see how much the moose in the area impact the vegetation and landscape. Although not overly difficult, you will have to descend at the very end of this trail to see the falls. There are several viewing platforms where you can see the falls. It may be this final section that tips the scales from easy to moderate, but as you can see, it's more than worth the three hours of your time to come and check this place out. Coming in at number one is Trout River Pond. Perhaps one of our favorite hikes in the entire park, this 14 km or 8.7 mile trail doesn't get the attention it deserves. Most of the hike takes you up and down as you skirt the side of the mountain. Not overly difficult, this route gives you ample opportunities to walk lakeside and get some stunning views. The further you go, the more beautiful it becomes. The mountains get bigger and you'll climb higher and higher, giving you a different vantage point of Trout River. Near the end, you'll come to the backside of Tablelands, where you can see just how different it is from the rest of the park. It's here you can sit in the red chairs of Parks Canada and take in the natural beauty of this hike. It's also here that the mountains engulf you. Of all the trails in the park, these moderate trails may give you the best views. Picking any of these hikes will both challenge and reward you. Seeing that many of these trails are longer, we recommend you take a lot of water and a windbreaker. We visited the park in August, and as you saw, the weather even then can be unpredictable. For more information on any of these trails, be sure to read our travel guides on our website at joshuatravelguy.ca. Don't forget to check out the full-length videos on our YouTube page for an in-depth look at our experience along each of these amazing hikes.